For 30 years, Cherry MX key switches have reigned supreme in enthusiast and gaming keyboards. But as much as I love Neapolitan ice cream, I think after eating it for 30 years, I might be ready to at least try something new. And apparently Razer, Logitech, and SteelSeries feel the same way, because each of them has released mechanical gaming keyboards in the last year based on a new made-for-gaming key switch. By the way, drop us a like on the video to let us know if you're ready to get your cringe on in the next part of Scrapyard Wars 2, coming in 48 hours. Eee! FreshBooks is the super simple invoicing solution that lets you get organized, save time, and get paid faster. Click on my face now to try it for free. So let's get this out of the way now. While it was co-developed with Kaiwa, the famous manufacturer of Cherry MX clones, the QS1 switch in the Apex M800 bears little resemblance to Cherry's MX design, and any similarity to the Omron and Logitech co-developed Romer G seems to be purely coincidental. QS1 switches are totally different feeling from anything that I've personally used before. But I'll have to return to that in a bit. The Apex M800 has two braided USB plugs for extra power, a built-in USB 2.0 hub at the top, and interchangeable rubber feet on the bottom to change the angle on the desk. Like the original Apex and Apex Raw Rubber Dome keyboards, the M800 features an aggressive looking industrial design with a flatter than usual interactive surface. And this goes for both the key switches underneath and the key caps, especially when you compare to the stair-stepped profile and contoured keycaps of most mechanical keyboards. This was done for a couple of reasons. Number one, to slightly reduce the travel time between keys, although neither Ed nor I was elite enough for the reduced vertical distance to help in a noticeable way, and without help from the bump on F or double bump on W, it did make it more difficult to determine what row of keys you were resting on. And number two, to reduce fatigue, something that I personally find a bit easier to buy into, since particularly for gaming, the M800's low stance reduces pressure points for me in spite of its lack of a wrist rest with my lazy, resting a lot of my weight on the table posture. And the spacebar helps with this hand position as well. I still don't like it for typing, that'll be a common theme for this video. And thanks to the very low 45 gram actuation force of the QS1 switch under it, it's actually possible to accidentally press while resting on it, though not nearly as bad as the Death Adder 2013. But for gaming, spamming spacebar and just general use, there is a reason that two and a half years after SteelSeries first introduced this spacebar to their gaming keyboards, this design, unlike the macro row above the F keys, is still here. It is better and more comfortable. But let's talk macro keys now. The six macro buttons to the left are really well spaced, so they're within reach but far enough away that you won't accidentally trigger a console command to change the name of every non-clan member in your server to headshot magnet every time you want to crouch. And no, you can't actually do that, but you can do almost anything else. SteelSeries Engine 3 might have ballooned to the size of a several year old graphics card driver, but damn it, I guess they've got enough functionality in the thing to justify it. There's one processor in the keyboard dedicated to just inputs, up to 256 of them at a time, just in case you thought your other dimensional clone might also want to press every single key on his M800 at the same time you are, and then a separate processor to handle lighting effects, so the utility of the keyboard is never affected by the bling bling. And every single key on the keyboard, including those macro keys, is reprogrammable and can be rebound to a keyboard function, mouse click, some combination of the two, a modifier, a profile changer, so you can switch up everything on the keyboard mid-program instead of relying on auto profile switching when you launch an application which Engine 3 supports as well and I didn't think I'd ever hear myself say this but SteelSeries has finally nailed it. It's the easiest customization interface I've personally used for a keyboard and they managed to do it without hamstringing the functionality. Good job.
And it looks like they've done a great job with the illumination effects as well, with all the standard fare like breathing, reactive typing, um, but also some nice little touches like three different modes of selecting which keys you want to configure, including a handy little magic wand that intelligently grabs keys that are already grouped, and some really sick pre-done effects, including a Danish flag and a Nyan Cat-inspired waving rainbow, both of which made me smile. They've also added Cloud Sync to the driver, but it's entirely optional, so you don't even need to create an account. You can just exit it when it first comes up, and I think that's a really nice touch. Okay, so we've beat around the bush long enough, let's talk QS1 switches. Like the Romer Gs, QS1s are not going to be compatible with Cherry MX Stem keycaps, so forget about customizing the keycaps on your keyboard. And like Romer Gs, they have a center-mounted RGB LED that enables brighter, more even lighting effects with less spill, and they actuate at one and a half millimeters of pressing down, up to 25% faster than a Cherry MX. But that's where the resemblance pretty much ends. Romer Gs have a very noticeable tactile bump, while QS1s are a linear switch. But I still think saying that they're like shorter Cherry MX Reds doesn't really get the point across. They have a strange resistance when you bottom them out that feels uh, kind of like pushing your hand down on a couch cushion, like even, 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 oh yeah, there's the, you know, there's the base of the couch. Um, like if you had really thick O-rings on a cherry, this makes them really quiet, which is nice, but also a little bit mushy feeling. So between that and the lack of a tactile bump, they are purely IMO abominable for typing, at least in this super flat configuration. So I won't be switching from MX Browns anytime soon. But that doesn't mean that they're bad. There's zero dead zone between the actuation and reset, which is good for gamers. And from talking to Edsel, whose skills are a little sharper than my own, the Apex M800 felt a little cramped in his words, but it is so well tuned for FPS gaming that it would beat out the G910 and every Cherry keyboard out there as his CSGO board of choice. If they had taken it one step further and left off the number pad to leave room for more natural mousing posture. And I guess that's the conclusion here. Unlike many other keyboards that were designed for gaming, this one really did go all in, gaming first, typing second, and it shows. So well done, Steel Series. Now let's see a 10 keyless, and you've really got our attention. Not mine, mind you, I type on my keyboard, but Ed's attention for sure. Speaking of ugly faces, or whatever I was talking about, your face isn't ugly, so why should you treat it like it is? Visit dollarshaveclub.com and join the club. Get high quality shaving supplies directly to your door so you never have to go outside and shop for supplies to get your face all looking shiny and clean because you'll have everything you need right in your bathroom where it belongs. That's fresh razors up to the six blade executive, that's aftershave, that's their Dr. Carver shave butter, and they even have their One Wipe Charlie's Peppermint Scented Butt Wipes for Men. Not related to your face, you could wipe your face with, actually you could wipe your face with them just fine. They've even got little travel packs so you can carry them around with you. Something that, man do I ever wish I had taken a butt ton, haha <laughs> that's funny, a butt ton of One Wipe Charlie's with me on my trip to Asia because let me tell you, bathrooms there do not have toilet paper in them and it is a fundamental problem. Anyway, I've gotten derailed a little bit here. The point is, visit dollarshaveclub.com, join the club, it only costs a few bucks a month to look great like me. Or if you don't think I look great, then look great like someone you think looks great. That's the whole point. All right, guys, so I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If this video sucked, I think you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, please, it helps us out a lot, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or even with a direct monthly contribution. Once you're done with all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so uh, click that little button in the top right corner and go check out the video where Luke and I build water-cooled PCs with no off-the-shelf parts for under $500, or at least we try to. Okay.